Why would a man who loves these hills and has this magnificent ranch and this vista you've got right here on the river want to uh, ever take the time out to fight these hard and difficult battles in the distant and remote Washington, D.C.? Oh, Walter, uh, I think that we enjoy the time that we spend here, but uh, all of my life uh, I have wanted to be a public servant. Uh, my father ahead of me was, and I grew up uh, uh, wanting to help people with their problems. And I get a satisfaction and a sense of achievement from uh, constructive efforts on behalf of human beings that uh, you can't get in all, most any other profession. Uh, I will have been in Washington 30 years uh, come next year, and uh, I think I'd just be lost if uh, I didn't uh, work uh, in some public field. If I couldn't uh, be in public life, I would want to be uh, a teacher as I was before I entered the public life because uh, uh, I could have an influence on the minds of the young people and lead them in the, the directions that uh, I would like to see them go. I've often said that if I'd had a boy, I'd want him to be either a politician or a preacher or a teacher because they would have a sense of achievement that comes uh, uh, from a few other uh, professions. Well, now, it took you a little while to find this way of your life. Uh, you, here at the ranch, uh, you wanted to get away early in life. You, you went away as a laborer before uh, your disappointed father succeeded in getting you back and into teacher's college. Uh, why did you want to leave in the first place? Well, uh, Walter, I didn't want to leave. It was uh, more of a necessity. I worked all my life. Uh, as a little boy, I shined shoes at the barber shop. Uh, I was a printer's devil. I ran off uh, the weekly paper on Thursday afternoon, the old Washington Press. I inked it. Uh, that's Washington, Texas Press. Uh, when I, uh, that's the name of the press. Uh, when I uh, graduated from high school at 15, I wanted a job, and there were not any jobs to be had around here in 1924, so I took the old philosopher's advice, Horace Greeley, and went west, young man, and worked two years in California in the flat building as an elevator boy in San Bernardino and finally wound up in the lawyer's office. But I came back and mother uh, talked me into going to college and uh, during the period I was in college I taught a Latin American school down in South Texas and it gave me great satisfaction and I thought I wanted to be a teacher. So when I finished college I went to Houston and taught a year and then the great opportunity of my life uh, came to me when Congressman Clayberg, one of the owners of the King Ranch, asked me to go to Washington as his secretary in the Hoover administration, 1931. And uh, except for a brief period of 15 months, I've been in Washington ever since, 12 years in the House, 12 years in the Senate, five years there as a secretary. Had you given any thought to a political career before that appointment to go to Washington? Yes, uh, I assume ever since uh, uh, they first told me of Grandpa's uh, uh, prediction. Uh, I had an ambition to be a United States Senator. And uh, I took the steps that I thought were calculated to prepare me for that work and to make it possible for me to be elected. I was first elected to Congress when I was 28 in 1937. In 1941, Senator Shepard died and I ran to succeed him. I was defeated in a very close race by the then governor of the state, uh, W. Leo Daniel. He defeated me in 1941 by 1,311 votes out of more than a million. And then I waited until 1948, and when governor, the then Senator O'Daniel, decided not to run, I ran uh, for that place and had a, a very close race, but was elected in November and have been in the Senate since that time. That loss to uh, W. Leo Daniel must have been a rather bitter one for you, your first uh, major state race. Did you, uh, what did you ascribe your loss to then? No, it wasn't bitter. Uh, I think that uh, Governor O'Daniel was a very popular public figure at the time, and I was a very young man and had, uh, was unknown uh, throughout the state. I'd represented a, a district in central Texas, and uh, I, I was rather... I ran rather surprisingly well uh, for the, uh, at that age and with the resources at my command. 
your technique of leadership is considerably different. I, if I may, I'd like to quote uh, uh, from a chap here who one observer has quoted one of your biographies. Being won over by Johnson is a rather overwhelming experience. The full treatment is an incredibly potent mixture of persuasion, badgering, flattery, threats, reminders of past favors and future advantages. Well, that's a, 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 a technique for leadership, obviously. Uh, how does this... I would, say, I would say that uh, uh, the fellow was more interested in his sentence structure than he was accuracy. Uh, <laughs> uh, you don't uh, deal with senators really that way. Uh, I think the only thing uh, that uh, uh, is calculated to appeal to members of the Senate is uh, a presentation of the facts and the soundness of your logic. Uh, nearly every senator that uh, takes the oath of office uh, is elected on a platform of doing what's right. And uh, your problem as leader is to convince him that uh, the cause you represent is the right cause. Now, uh, uh, there are not any favors that you can do for a senator that you remind him of. Uh, there's no cajolery or flattery involved. Uh, uh, that doesn't appeal to a man that's uh, capable and worthy of representing uh, one of the great states in the Union. Uh, they're not schoolboys, uh, even though some of these fellows that uh, write these things sometimes uh, uh, make them sound uh, that way. Uh, I would say that uh, I try to follow the old prophet Isaiah's advice, come let us reason together. And uh, that course of action uh, always appeals to reasonable men. And most senators are reasonable. Uh, uh, Republicans sometimes are uh, a little more difficult for us Democrats to reason with than the members of our own party. But uh, all of them are patriotic uh, uh, members of the Senate, and they want to do what's best for their country. And uh, once they're convinced that the course of action that you present is for the best interests of America, uh, you'll usually have a lopsided vote in your favor. Senator, uh, since you were a protege, in a sense, of uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's in, in those early days of the New Deal with your NYA administration here, uh, you were identified with the more liberal element of the Democratic Party in those days. And I think in recent years, the identification has been more toward the conservative side. Is, is this a kind of the normal development of a man, do you feel, toward the liberal to the conservative? And is this a tendency that's likely to continue in your own life, do you feel? Or? Well, I presume that we all become a little more prudent uh, as we uh, grow older, although I've never been much of a believer in uh, labels. Uh, I'm a great admirer of President Roosevelt's now, just as I was then. Uh, he hasn't changed, uh, uh, in my viewpoint, any. And uh, as I engage in a little introspection, I haven't changed much. Uh, uh, my philosophy is that I'm a, a free man first, and an American second, United States Senator third, and a Democrat fourth, in that order. Now, I am a member of the Democratic Party because I think that uh, through the vehicle of that party, I can best uh, see my philosophy translated into action. I believe my party cares more uh, about the problems uh, of the people of this country and is more concerned with helping them with their problems than the Republican Party. And for that reason, I'm a Democrat. But uh, uh, I'm a, a free man and an American and a senator first. Senator, uh, uh, I don't go in much for the labels of liberal and conservative. Uh, I think you can be a progressive uh, senator and still be a prudent senator. I don't think you have to be a wastrel. I think we've demonstrated that in the Democratic Party by cutting $12.5 billion dollars uh, from the president's uh, budget requests. I think you can be a conservative uh, senator without being a reactionary senator. Uh, but labels don't mean much to me. What I'm interested in is, is this piece of legislation or is this uh, uh, project or is this program good for my country? Is it the right thing to do? And if it's good for my country, it's good for my party and consequently good for me. Senator, uh, the darkest day, I guess, in your uh, in your life uh, came in 1955 when you had the heart attack, which we all know about. But I'm wondering how that uh, 
experience affected your philosophy? I, I know that there are some who we, our researchers, have talked to in the uh, Senate to uh, said that uh, before that they sort of felt you were a brash young politician, but after that they felt you became the politician's politician, that this was a turning point in a way. Do you feel that yourself at all? No, I don't think it had any uh, appreciable effect on the course of my conduct at all. I think uh, during the period of 60 days when I was uh, uh, away from the Senate chamber that uh, I had time to reflect and uh, really appreciate all the good people that I'd known and uh, how unworthy perhaps I'd been of uh, their devotion and their friendship. Uh, I know that uh, I never really recognized the fact that uh, uh, the senators could be as good men as they demonstrated to me they were. Uh, I remember Senator Nolan wrote me nearly every day that I was in the hospital and I had uh, communications from every member of the Senate except one. Uh, a good many of them came to see me nearly every day and uh, it was their interest and their prayers I think that sustained me during that period uh, when uh, I was somewhat distressed. But uh, after the initial two months and I came back here to the ranch uh, I haven't observed that it's affected my conduct of public business uh, at all. As a matter of fact, uh, I sometimes amused when I think of the letter I received from President Eisenhower uh, telling me that he had read in the papers of my activity and he thought I was uh, uh, going to work a little too fast and he hoped I'd slow down. And that letter was sent to me without a signature by General Person. General Person said that it was the last letter dictated by the president the night before he had his heart attack. And he was lecturing me on slowing down a little bit uh, just before he had his. 